Welcome to Vantage Points. I'm Hisham and Maligi. Today I have a treat for you. I have the comedian Jeremy McClellan, who was uh, uh, like well known among the Muslim community, became one of the top comedian in uh, Muslim events around the country in the past few years. I had the privilege and honor to know him before he became famous uh, with the Muslim community, and we're going to go over all of this and his life and his comedy and his even trips to uh, some Muslim uh, countries and his experience. So I'm just going to bring him in, and we're going to start right away. Stay. Jeremy, thank wow, you so much. Welcome. Yeah, thank you for having me. Marhaban. Uh, can you say salam alaikum? Salam alaikum. Wa alaikum as -salam. Are you Muslim? You I, no, no. What are you? I am. Uh, I'm Catholic. Why? Because <laughs> <laughs> I haven't. Because uh, <laughs> um, I think it's true. Uh, okay. So that's a that's a good start. Um, and that's not uh, a good start at all. <laughs> yeah, not a good start for Muslims, but I think it's true. So I mean, why else? Why else would I be uh, Catholic? Because I, I, you know, I was raised Presbyterian. I was raised Protestant, and then I became Catholic. So okay, I'm, I'm even worse. Uh, you know. <laughs> No, we'll get into this later on. Sure. But I just wanted because so many people, uh, of course, the the Islamophobia industry uh, portray you as a, even Muslim Brotherhood. You, you right? Yeah, that, that uh, I um, there was a video that I did a while back, and uh, and Pam Geller, you know, bless her heart, she she posted that um, the video was uploaded by uh, Jeremy McClellan, um, who is. Uh, supported by and funded by the Muslim Brotherhood comedy circuit. So they used <laughs> the phrase, yeah, she, she used the phrase Muslim Brotherhood comedy circuit, which I, you know, made fun of and laughed at. But then later that night I was uh, going to sleep and I was started getting insecure. I was like, do they have a comedy circuit? Like, am I, and I just don't know about it. Like, do they, like, why am I not on their comedy circuit? I started getting offended. I was like, am I going to have to like, you know, how do I get Beatty to like, send me uh right. yeah i mean like from a jail cell like yeah. i just i like the idea that he has very strong opinions from a jail cell in egypt about whether like about like who gets booked at at the right. events you know right right so and, and there's, yeah, there, there's money and yes yeah absolutely um and uh yeah which i i wish i wish that were the case but it's it's not you know, bless her heart. I'm I'm not yeah. even sure she believes what she puts. I, I I really don't think she believes it. She's just an agitator. Yeah. That that's what she does. Right. I wonder how someone gets to the point where, like, either she believes. I mean, it, like, maybe she believes it. Maybe she's a crazy person and really thinks everything that she says is true. But I wonder, like, if she doesn't think it's true, then like, at what point do you like do you get to the point where you're just saying stuff? And it's almost like a character, you know, and, and you're sort of, and you sort of are separate, separated from, you know, the, like the pang of conscience where you're like, right. Oh, I'm saying this about a real person, you know, right. Um, right. or maybe this is all just a game. You know, it's like, it's like not real life. I mean, people say that a lot about social media. They're like, social media is not real life. I'm like, well, you, I mean, it's, it isn't, it isn't because you know, you can really mess people up. I, right saying horrible things about them on social media so right. um it's uh but yeah I, i've always wondered at what point in someone's career do they get to the point where they're like this is all just an act uh, well you know. i'll tell you a story when i ran for office in 2013 in new york mm -hmm. city um roger stone was supporting my opponent so nice. i won against his opponent in the within the party mm -hmm. so he he tweeted about me that i am supported by the taliban the muslim brotherhood and al-qaeda wow not one not two but all three yeah and they're all <laughs> and of course those and of course they all get along right exactly yeah, they're, they're right. old bodies but <laughs> right. so th they play this game of whack-a-mole whenever mm -hmm. a muslim thing or a muslim person rises it's just whack-a-mole you know right like th that's what they do so they don't want any um resemblance of normality of right. a muslim image in the united states and and in the mm. world of course and well, it's, have... it's been interesting seeing um the parallels and obviously you know the parallels aren't exact but seeing um like for example, um, uh, Kamala Harris mm -hmm. was saying things about the Knights of Columbus um, and how the Knights of Columbus 
um, which is a Catholic charitable organization, um, and that that they were, uh, and she, but she made the Knights of Columbus sound like they were some extremist group, you know, dedicated to like the overthrow of American democracy and the installation of a Catholic monarchy or something. Hmm. Like she made them sound crazy, and like everyone in the Catholic world knows that like Knights of Columbus is like a group that your dad is in that yeah. like has these like fish, like cooking, like cookouts, these the, like these fish fries during Lent and, or like, you know, they like hand out food to the homeless or something. Mm -hmm. um, and so, but like to people outside of the Catholic community who are reading about like the Knights of Columbus, just the name sounds like, you know, it's like some colonial uh, militant, like Knights Templar group. Uh, it, it might, you know, it might sound scary. And um, she said that when Kavanaugh was uh, being uh, nominated. And mm -hmm. so for, for her, that was, that, that was disqualifying because, because <laughs> like it's some like terrorist group, but like it, so as a Catholic, you listen to it and you're laughing. You're like, that, this is absurd. Mm -hmm. But then you realize that people who aren't Catholic, like how would they know that that's absurd? Right. And, yeah. and, and I, I think about um, the reporting that's done on like Muslim groups or, um, you know, like so-and-so went to a fundraiser and like also at the fundraiser was this person. And it's like, but like, do you check the guest list at fundraiser? Like it was, it's, it's this. And like, anytime I see the word like links to, someone with links to mm, somebody mm, mm. it's it's always absurd because like if you really went through uh you know if, if you're a public person and you um either have a cause that you believe in or you are uh involved in charitable causes you're gonna be at events and you're gonna be doing stuff with people yep. who like all kinds of folks yeah yep. and so no matter what happens somebody can create a narrative where you are you know yep. Like people can, people could create a narrative where I am, uh, you know, a member of the Muslim Brotherhood, like a Pakistani, um, you know, ISI agent, or um, like a right wing, like Christian terrorist, right? right. So it's like j just by following the links and like who have I talked to, and like so, I, you know, that that the, those kind of smears, what it does is it is it makes. It, it makes it so the only people that can enter public life are people who have like really paid attention and to like who they who they appear with, right? And right. who they, uh, um, or maybe they've been able to hire a PR firm to like bury all of that. Exactly. Um, but like everybody in public life, every politician has been at weird events, has been at, uh, and, and so it, it's always interesting. But it's it's you know like. For example, people said I was on the Muslim Brotherhood comedy circuit because I've done events for like Helping Hand, right? Helping Hand. And like, th that's a very similar thing to the Knights of Columbus where like, if you're involved, like no one who's ever been to a Helping Hand event hmm. or like has done like charitable work with Helping Hand thinks they're like some <laughs> like, uh, you know, terrorist organization. But if you haven't heard of it, then you're like, oh, the Islamic circle of North America, you know, and it's like, <laughs> but, but it, it just, it just goes to show that uh, something that like ignorance is, can make anything sound. Right. And, and, you, and like, you can, you can, if you're somebody like Pam Geller and, and you make a, you make a living, um, you know, stirring up this kind of stuff, you can craft a narrative about anything. Exactly. Yeah. And, and that's their job. They, they make like, right. Pam Geller, Robert Spencer, and many others, mm -hmm. they basically, their entire career is built on vilifying Muslims. Right. You know, so, I mean... And if you, you know, r r like Richard Spencer is, is Catholic, and he's, uh, if you go to, like, Catholic bookstores and look in, like, the Islam section, um, it's gotten better. There's There's been some better books written recently that, that are in there. But for a while, it was, just, it was just him. It was just Richard Spencer. And if you don't know anything about Islam... And you just pick up one of his books and read it like you don't know that it's not true. Right. Right. I was talking actually about Robert Spencer of Jihad Watch. Oh, no, that is what I'm talking about. I, I misspoke. I misspoke. Okay. 
But the, right. the person in Jihad Watch, uh, he is the Catholic guy who, who's written books who I've, right, right, right. Who, I've, uh, who I've talked about. Yeah, Actually, both of them came to Staten Island, where I'm originally, I mean, well, oh, nice. I lived yeah. for 20 years. Yeah, um, I'm originally from Cairo, Egypt, as you know, mm -hmm. um, but I've been in Staten Island 20 years. So anyway, when the Muslim American Society Mass was trying mm -hmm. to get a foothold, like get a mosque, uh, a building for a mosque, they spoke to a church in Staten Island. They had an empty convent. The mm -hmm. church was hurting financially. The convent was empty for a few years. It was used by by um, uh, nuns, but no longer mm -hmm. in use. So they said, "Okay, we'll give you this, sell you this building. We'll right. keep the rest of the church, and for your people on Friday, that that's the priest. He was a very nice guy. Uh, on Friday, you can tell your people to park in the parking lot of the church. Mm. So it was that good. And right. then the news came out to the community, and a few." Right of the racists in the area because of of course every muslim is responsible for 9 11. Right, the muslims are taking are, are taking over this church and right uh so, as if as if muslims invaded and then forced exactly. the people out <laughs> and, and and that's one thing that that annoys me i mean obviously like as a christian i think it's sad when churches close um but the reason they close is because people stop going right and whenever there's a church that becomes a mosque, there's always like a protest or something and lots of Christians show up. And I'm like, if you guys would just show up on Sundays, exactly, you know, like we wouldn't be having this problem. <laughs> like so exactly. it's, uh, yeah. yeah. So uh, Pamela Geller and Robert Spencer came to a meeting of the uh, area, like mm -hmm. the community board, I forgot what is it called, uh, to oppose the sale of the mosque. The mm -hmm. meeting was made so the people from Mass tell their plans to the area residents and, right. and you know, get into support. So they bust in people from outside of Staten Island. Nice. Right. And I was standing about like six feet away from them before the COVID six feet thing. Thank God it mm -hmm. was more than that at least. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so they, they, they made their career based on these mm -hmm. things. But anyway, enough of that. Uh, we spent about 10 minutes on that. Let's I like start. tangents. That's my thing. I love, <laughs> I love going on tangents. Yeah. Uh, let's start with you. Who mm -hmm. you are? Who are you really? Mm. Where are you from? What's you your know? life? And let's start from there. <laughs> uh, well, I'm from and I, I still live in Charleston, South Carolina. That's my... Uh, my hometown and uh, where uh, my wife and I and two kids live and um, and both of our parents live here as well. Um, and uh, yeah, so I guess for like for present purposes, you know, I, I worked uh, with people with disabilities for a long time. And then I had clients with like with disabilities who who were Muslim, who I who I got to know. And um, and then I started doing comedy. Um, like five years ago. And then when I started doing comedy, I was talking about my opinions on religion and uh, politics and, uh, you know, Christianity, Islam, and my experiences, you know, with Muslims throughout my life. And uh, I, you know, I went viral in the Muslim community, started doing shows, I get off, you know, for the Muslim Brotherhood. And then, uh, and then I, um, uh, well, and then I did a, a tour of Pakistan, um, and uh, that was three years ago, and that was uh, a really big hit. And then, um, then you know, things were great. And then COVID happened, and mm -hmm. uh, I haven't done a live comedy show since March. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just it's just killed me. Uh, and but I've done stuff online. I've done like Zoom Zoom comedy shows with people with right. uh, like with universities that are a lot of fun. Um, as long as people unmute their mics, that's the big thing. Right. Is uh, you know, as I told you when you uh, were the MC for the um, uh, the coalition for, like for civil freedoms event, um, you have to unmute your mics because otherwise I'm performing and I'm not hearing any laughs. Right. Like, I can see people going like, you know, whatever, but like I can't hear it and it just sounds awful. So. Right. Right. Um, and now here I am. So that's like a yeah. brief overview of uh, of 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 my life. I hope that I hope that's enough. 
Hey, we're going to get into yeah. each part now. Yeah, let's do it. I, you became more famous in Pakistan than the That's United right. States at some point. But yeah, at some start. point. I think it was when I did my tour. It just uh, it kind of blew up and, uh, you know, I got like retweeted by politicians and um, yeah. there were everybody greeting me. And, uh, and so, yeah, it was a lot of fun. But us, we met at the beginning of your career before oh, yeah. you became famous in the Muslim community. Was it the Students for Liberty in 2015? Yes, that's right. Students for Liberty, right, back during my uh, my libertarian days. I still have, like, libertarian streak, but, uh, mm -hmm. but um, yeah, so during my libertarian days, we met, and uh, that was mm -hmm. you were doing uh muslims for liberty i think right um, so let's talk about this because people will be intrigued that here mm -hmm. is this catholic comedian mm -hmm. who's more famous within the muslim circles than others right who was a libertarian and i mm -hmm. and i know that something happened at some point but i want to get your you know uh, what what went through your mind how did you become libertarian why mm -hmm. what is libertarianism to you and why, if you left it or whatever happened? Sure. Yeah. So um, I have always had sort of like an anti-authoritarian streak, especially um, the uh, you know I became libertarian um, a around issues of war, immigration, um, and like the drug war and um, civil liberties, things like that. Um, I was always pro-life. Um, as 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 a Christian, so there was, and of course, there's obviously a huge split within the libertarian movement about that. Um, and I guess uh, you know, so then I right, I I, I was a libertarian comedian. I toured with Gary Johnson when he was running for president, and uh, that was fun. Um, and but I think I I became. And this is a debate within the, like within libertarian circles about like is libertarianism just a um, sort of a collection of policy positions that you have, um, or is it like an under an un, a philosophy of like the human person um, and what it means to have rights? Um, what is the purpose of government? Is the government is, is government just something, I mean, one thing that I reject now is the idea that government is um, something artificial. Um, mm -hmm. I, I don't think that government is something that humans got together and created just to protect people's rights. I think okay. it's the, uh, I think that hu hu human beings strive towards the common good within community and uh, government is something that orders that. Um, mm -hmm. And, uh, for like for better or worse and you know i so i i think eventually i began to see libertarianism as something that um it, it, it was hard to think of it just as a collection of 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 policies you know okay. um and I, I i started seeing it as more a um a philosophy that i thought was incompatible with uh with what I believed about the human person. Mm. Um, and, um, but as it stands, you know, the, I mean, I still think that like, I mean, there are libertarian Catholics and right. I, 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 I certainly know that there are versions of libertarianism that are compatible um, or that people think are compatible, but mm -hmm. I don't, I don't know if that's sustainable. Um, right. Like over time, I think that, um, uh, I think that eventually the the policy positions and, and the crowd that you run with start to, I don't want to say infect, but it starts to uh, change how you view, um, like how, how, you, how you view the, like, the, like the human person, the purpose of community. Um, so, yeah. So, I mean, it, one of the bad things that happen when you say I am X is people pigeonhole you or box mm -hmm. you in that mold you are X and that's your like um, slogan or, or label for life. Mm -hmm. I call myself a libertarian, small L libertarian. Mm -hmm. That can or cannot be, I mean, it might or might not be connected to what is known today as the libertarian party. Mm -hmm. Why am I libertarian, small L? Because of the principles of liberty. 
and a lot of it, and that's what drew me into it to begin with, after uh, Obama's first two years from 2008 to 2010, it hit me. I realized it is not the party of the president. It is not the color of the president. It is not the gender of the president, but it's the institution, the system, and especially the presidency and how a person becomes the nominee of either side of the ruling system, like mm -hmm. Democrat, Republican now, because they're in control. So like his performance, he really, I bought into the hope and change. Well, me too. I, I, I campaigned for him in 2008. I, you know, I live in Chicago and I would go right. to the headquarters and I was a big right. fan. And then 2000, around 2010, I, uh, I, I bailed on that. Yeah. So even if he was well-intentioned and mm -hmm. in some ways he was, let, let's mm -hmm. give him the benefit of the doubt, the system is overpowering the dynamics, the, the everything around the system forces the person, the, the president into certain directions. So therefore, why focus on the head when the rest of the body is completely corrupt? And mm -hmm. we, we have this proverb that says the uh, a, a sound brain is in a healthy body, mm -hmm. you know? So anyway, uh, so that's when I started really leaning because I had heard about Ron Paul uh, from mm -hmm. the from that election, the 2008, and he was talking and, and he was running as a Republican, not even libertarian. Right. And he was talking about liberty. He was talking about anti-war positions uh, and, and so many things that resonates with a lot of people across the board, mm -hmm. like decent human beings right. would uh, accept that. So anyway, so I looked, what is the closest philosophy of a political party mm -hmm. to these principles of equality, humanity, liberty, this and that. Um, and I, I've seen it in the libertarian principles, mm -hmm. the conduct of many who call themselves libertarian is completely, in my opinion, and I'm sure you had some experience with that, opposite. Yeah, yeah I think... Right. I, I, I think that at, at a certain point, I, I, I got to the point where it just wasn't helpful to identify um, because even though I may have positions that were shared um, or that like like that I shared with libertarians, the reasons why I supported those policies were different um, than uh, sort of the libertarian because I mean, libertarianism is is pretty much like classical liberalism. I mean, it's sort yes. of liberalism as it was understood in the past. And, and I, I'm not a classical liberal and I, I, I don't, uh, I don't believe in that. And, um, I mean, j just for one thing, um, liberty, the idea of liberty of being free. Um, I, I, it, it, it's freedom to, uh, pursue the good. Mm -hmm. and to achieve the good and to choose the good it's not liberty cannot be the the ability or the um uh like the ability to choose evil right B because if it is then you have to say that god isn't isn't free right? right right and uh god is obviously the most free being but he he god obviously doesn't do evil or can't do evil whatever you want, right. however you want to say that right. and so our ability to um like when i think about myself like my ability to choose evil is not an expression of human freedom um and uh so th that's just one example um and other things like like the drug war um mm -hmm. for example you know for example like I might oppose the drug war mm -hmm. because it's imprudent or because it is, uh, it does more harm than good mm -hmm. or um, it uh, ends up destroying families by puts, you know, sending people to jail. Um, and, uh, but, but, I, but I wouldn't say that like people have a right to do whatever they want with their own bodies. Right. Because, because we don't actually own our bodies like God does, right? So, like, that's so a like, very good point. Let, let, let me stop you for a second. Yeah. Here. That, that's an excellent point to separate the concept of libertarianism from government. It's the government 
conduct that we're talking about, mm -hmm. not the human being. So when I am dealing with a government agent, he does mm -hmm. not own me. He cannot direct me to do something, except if I'm breaking a law. Like he, right. the, 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 the purpose of the government based on libertarian philosophy is to protect life, liberty, and property, as in the founding mm -hmm. documents. Now, when I'm dealing with you, you have no power over me. I am free to do what I want, right. except to hurt you or steal your stuff. So this is the separation between dealing with other humans and mm -hmm. dealing with God. God owns me. As a Muslim, I believe that. Mm -hmm. and, and as a Catholic, you believe that. Right. Okay. So I wouldn't, it, it is forbidden for me as a Muslim and, 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 and like the, um, the Orthodox mainstream Muslim uh, or the majority believe that tattoos are haram, mm -hmm. uh, forbidden. Right. So I do not own my body in this case. I do not, I cannot have a tattoo mm -hmm. because God owns me. But this is self-imposed. The government cannot come and tell me, put a tattoo on your body or not to put a tattoo on your body. Mm -hmm. That's the, the separation here. Right. I, I understand that. Um, and I think that, I, I think where, where we would part ways is that, like the, I think the government does have a role in directing mm -hmm. people towards the good um, and uh, towards the common good, towards um, virtue and not just protecting um, our, uh, our rights or liberty or, um, uh, or property. Um, I, be, be, because I think that th that's just not what the government is. Um, and uh, so I, I, th I think that would be a big difference. Now, this is how the really government wonderful. does how the government does that is is a, a huge question. And right. whether the government is, you know, um, I don't know if you've read uh, um, Whale Hollocks, The Impossible State. Um, and I, well, I don't, Hallock, yeah, yeah, Whale Hollocks, The Impossible State. Um, it's brilliant because it it it's. And there is like a form of libertarianism that I um, that I still kind of flirt with where mm -hmm. um, like, OK, I do believe that the state is this um, like does this and that it's it and, and that the, like the job of the state is to direct us towards the common good and towards. Um, and so is the nation state the organism that does that? And Excellent there is a there 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 is a big strain within Catholic thought that says no, mm -hmm. that 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 the nation state and it in Will Halak's the impossible state he he does the same thing with Islam where where he says that right. like the like the presuppositions of, of the nation state are so different mm -hmm. from the presuppositions of of Islam mm -hmm. um, and Sharia that that it's that trying to combine the two is monstrous right mm. so you can have for example um a catholic monarchy you know you think about um catholic monarchies um in um the, 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 there's a book called before church and state that I'm, that I'm reading right now that's interesting and it's a lot like the impossible state but from a catholic perspective because mm -hmm. it goes to like 13th century france and it shows um how the church and state were sort of interwoven um but there wasn't this like overburdening like law mm -hmm. and uh and the same is true throughout history with like you know the caliphates or kingdoms or empires where mm -hmm. you you might have like the emperor might be one religion but your city might be a different religion mm -hmm. and um you know one thing that i've always been really interested in is pluralism and um i like pluralism to be chunky um, not, not like, like in my opinion, I think it would be fine if we had cities in the United States that were, um, that were like, like that were Muslim, that, like mm -hmm. that were governed by Sharia or whatever. Um, and also cities that were Catholic. And, um, I think that, I think that that would be, um, that that kind of chunky pluralism existed for the most part under empires, under Kings, under, um, um, where it, it was, it was actually a lot more hands off 
exactly than than the than the like than the modern state. And so, if we try to, for example, turn the American nation state Catholic, right? Mm. Um, the result might just be hell because it would be um, you. It, it, it's like you would have to make the tax code Catholic, and uh, so and, and and I don't necessarily think that like the administrative bureaucratic nation state mm. is uh, something that can be just made Christian. Like I mean, like Christian governments m- might be something else entirely. This is a, such an amazing discussion, and, and allow me to go back a little bit. Please, please. So you mentioned um, now the, the nation state might not be the best, and, mm-hmm. and, and I agree in many ways, especially with the Constitution in its current form and amendments, mm-hmm. because the, they intentionally made it so that it is completely, not completely, but I mean, the, the separation, government is not a, a religious body, it does not supervise religion it does not approve of religion or oppose religion it's it's up to you people to do what you want which is a very similar thing for people to understand from an islamic perspective and many muslims do not even understand this including like imams and scholars and stuff like Mm -hmm. that the thing here is under the prophet muhammad medina uh, confederation you had Jews, you had Christians, you had Sabians, you had so many different groups living together in a society. What right. is the issue here? Okay, two Christians come to you in a dispute. They have the option to resolve their dispute in an arbitration or a mediation within their tradition. Mm-hmm. If they opt to use the Islamic legal system, that's they have to be willingly uh, wanting to do that. Mm-hmm. Similarly, I remember Judge Napolitano was on um, Fox News, and they were all up in arms that Sharia law in Texas, out of every <laughs> any state. Yeah. And there was this arbitration method because courts mm-hmm. are overrun by cases, so they right. do a lot of arbitration. So there was this Muslim arbitration system set in place where two Muslims... Uh, uh, under supervision of a judge, an arbitrator is assigned, probably a scholar or someone mm-hmm. who knows, and they go to them, and then the resolution is approved by the judge. So still, the American secular government judge is the final, right. uh, has the final say on things, mm-hmm. but they were all up in arms in Sharia law, and if yeah. you know what yeah, is you would want it in every way. <laughs> well, if, if I, if I, um, let's say that I um, were to get coronavirus and um, I am on the bed, uh, like like the hospital bed, I'm unconscious, um, I'm just wasting away. I've got a feeding tube, um, and what should the doctors do with me? Well. Um, I've made it clear that um, as far as end of life decisions um, that uh, I would want my my de- uh, I would want the decisions to be done in keeping with the teachings of the Catholic Church okay. right um, and that means like no euthanasia and it's there's that there's different things that are like well what's an extraordinary circumstance what's not um, but I, I've made that clear and so if that were to happen um, a judge would have to, uh, rule um, based on the teachings of the Catholic Church. Mm. Um, and like the same thing is true of, uh, I mean, like, like, like the United States has for, for forever used religious law in the courts because um, if somebody uh, dies and they all, all their will says is that their, their estate should be, you know, g- given away in keeping with like with their tradition um then somebody has to interpret that um right and uh you know when when immigrants from israel um come uh there's a question of like uh or just from like from any country are they married um and whether they are married or not depends on the teachings of uh of the rabbis or or whoever um Mm -hmm. 
And so like we've, you know, obviously like the American nation state is over all of that or considers itself over all of that. Uh -huh. um, but the idea of like polycentric law um, and having, you know, where if something happens, you can have different groups arbitrate for you that 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 is not like something that's crazy or foreign. It's something that we've done for years. Right. Uh, by the way, about the healthcare proxy, is that what you were talking about? You you set up a healthcare proxy? Well, but what if you don't set up a healthcare proxy and the only thing that you've said is that it has to be in keeping with the Catholic Church? Well, it's not documented in this case. So it's better. Well, but what if it was? What if like what if you wrote like an email saying that you wanted it? N email is not enough. It has to be a signed document by you and, and it it's different from state to state. Yeah, in I, South Carolina you can just send an email. Oh really? Okay. Yeah. So I as mean, long as if, you have it written down, okay. Somewhere, if if there is nothing, then the next of kin, mm -hmm. which which would be your wife in this case. Hopefully, nothing of this, of course, will yeah, happen. Right, right, right. But we're just discussing. So people like it's. Uh, I I hosted um, the founder of Sharia Wiz. It's a um, uh, uh, will Islamic will healthcare okay. proxy and power of attorney. Right. So we went through this thing, and it is better to fill it out and sign it and even better if you notarize it sign in mm -hmm. front of a notary sure. because now it's you know ironclad mm -hmm. what you want to happen and uh, in a conversation with uh, a different lawyer uh, many years ago he said this and I'm, and I'm just saying this so like because the states are different in laws you cannot say in your will i want my distribution of wealth to be according to Sharia, Islamic mm. Sharia. No, you have to specify it. You have to specify one person to to do or it, or you have specify to specify the actual yeah. distribution. You cannot just say according to Sharia. Right. You know. Um, so, uh, and also, mind you, there might be different interpretations of right. certain things. N sure. Not too much at all in in the uh, in the inheritance, but you know there still might be uh, something so anyway um so yeah so 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 you're saying this of course because the power of the state uh, and or the control of the state so now the state has to and and we don't mean the individual states i'm talking about the government in general uh has to um apply its laws if there is a law for example, in you said in North Carolina, there is you or, can, or South Carolina. So, yeah, South Carolina. Yeah, so, you send an email. Yeah, you, you you can just well your end of life decisions uh, can be and even even a will doesn't need to be needs it, like it doesn't have to be notarized. It just has to have two witnesses. Okay, right. It, so in New York, you have to sign a physical paper. Mm -hmm. You see, so every yeah. state is is different. But again, and here's the thing government imposes certain things that might or might not be against your beliefs mm -hmm. and this this is a, a simpler thing but i had actually a, a muslim guy uh, passed away suddenly and left uh, behind a house a car both on loan uh, i mean mortgage and car loan and they went through hell his family in, in just to start the process three thousand dollars to a lawyer to to get into uh you know the beginning of the distribution mm -hmm. and ownership and whatnot so it's important for people to look into this but but that's sure. a good example of how government kind of complicates things but also keeps things orderly you know right yeah i understand <laughs> this anyway so let's talk about pakistan how did that sure. happen well, you know, after I, I went viral in the Muslim community, you know, talking about people that I knew who were who were Pakistani, and uh, I um, and I became friends with a lot of a lot of Pakistanis, and I had you know before in my life, um, like the really big the, the like the really big jump was when uh, I did like a, a tour like a comedy tour of Pakistan, and um, people were uh, pretty excited, and they. Um, uh, you know, I was like trolling people online who were like in the government and uh, that that led to like me having like tons of fans over there, which I still have. And so and, and I've been back a bunch of times since then. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, but 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 yeah, that and it, it 
every step of it felt natural. Um, but looking back, it's like, man, what, what in the world? Um, mm -hmm. and, uh, so, but it's been, it's been awesome. And I really, I mean, I'm, I'm grateful for it. Um, but it's definitely been a wild ride for sure. And you got a lot of attacks from the, uh, oh, the Indian nationalists. Yeah, <laughs> the, the Hindutva. Um, and, <laughs> and like Hindutva is, is, is another example of, uh, of, people who are trying to combine the modern nation state with a pre-modern um like like to them uh it's like indianness right so hinduism and trying to combine hinduism with the modern nation state and the result has been uh sort of a because i think the nation state is inherently hostile mm -hmm. to 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 pluralism and to yeah. the like the existence of of minorities and so because it needs everything, it needs every individual to be um, sort of just one subject mm -hmm. instead of dealing with uh, these thick communities. Right. Um, and I think I think you see that happening in India. You see it happening in, in Pakistan as well. Um, right. You know, any sort of nation state that that tries to uh, and, and so as if if your goal, whether it's like whether you're a Muslim or whether you're like a Catholic integralist or whatever. The goal, if if your goal is to um, sort of uh, have the state um, uh, serve the common good and to serve the spiritual good of its citizens, uh, you need to reckon with the idea that that maybe it's not um, uh, maybe the nation state in its current form is not the best way to do that. So yeah. I was saying stuff like this all the time, and, pe and people in India didn't like that. Um, mm. They were not uh, big fans of my interesting opinions about polycentric law or whatever. Right. So, um, and, uh, but yeah, I got trolled a lot by them and then I responded and then they sort of, uh, um, it became a, it, it became sort of a thing. Um, and yeah. Awesome. Um, I remember, uh, I think it was 2016 or 2017 at uh, also the Students for Liberty on stage, you said the following. I regret that Rand Paul couldn't be with us today in person or in spirit. Yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> I, I said that he. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, right. I was supposed to open for Rand Paul um, and at, at the Students for Liberty convention. And this was, and he, he didn't show up. He sent like a right. video. And um, there was a another speaker who was not able to make it because of Trump's travel ban. And it was really strange to see, like, j just to step back and be like, okay, Rand Paul doesn't, uh, like, and Rand Paul supported the travel ban. And and yeah. so um, it was just a bizarre series of events where, like, one speaker banned another speaker, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> which I've never seen happen before. Um, but, yeah, so I, I got a lot of hate uh, for that, for, from, right. from, uh, I guess right libertarians who were, right. um, and at the time I was, I was, a, I would, I guess you'd call me like a left libertarian, um, and uh, yeah, got 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 quite a bit of hate. But if you, what I loved is that the people who hated what I said put the video online um, right. on YouTube and were like, "How dare Jeremy!" But in the video, everybody's laughing. Exactly. And so I'm like, all right, cool. Thank you for that. Um, yeah, I appreciate smart. <laughs> I appreciate the promo, the promo uh, for that. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, if, if you put up a video of me like bombing, me not doing well at all, then then I wouldn't like that. I'd like right. get somebody to try and take it down or something. I, I think this was the beginning of the decline of the relationship with the Libertarian. Maybe so. <laughs> so, Maybe but so. Th this was an awesome summary of what Rand Paul really is. He's not mm -hmm. with us in person or in spirit. He's supporting the ban, supporting a lot of Trump policies, which is anti-liberty and this and that. So yeah, I mean, I, I couldn't agree more. Uh, I, I, I still don't know what to think about Trump because he, I, and, and, and I, I think I've come down to just, it just, it's just all being about ego. Mm. And because if, if he, wanted to be a dictator mm -hmm. he's got so many opportunities that he's had to right. just like whether it's the pandemic or um uh i mean 
and I guess we'll see if he loses the election and holds on to power or something crazy like that. But yeah. like, you know, they, he hasn't functioned like a dictator. Um, and he, but, but he talks like one for sure. Right. Um, he talks like he's, and if you listen and you don't like him, like if, if you don't think he's funny, right. If you don't think he's funny, then he's terrifying. I think. Right. Um, right. and, uh, like and and the stuff that he does would make you think that he's just gonna start, you know, doing all kinds of crazy stuff, but he never does. And like he's is he's, it because of him though, or the surrounding? It's surrounding people. Oh. Um, and, and and like for example, um, I've been really angry with him um, recently because he he ran as a populist, mm -hmm. um, and he has not done anything in terms of, um, uh, and I may, may, maybe this is why I'm not a libertarian, but like he, he should just send people money right now. Like the pe mm. people have been so hurt by right. this pandemic and it's like, just give us money. Like, or if you don't give us money, we're going to go out and we're going to like spread the virus or whatever. So like, you know, and it's like, populists usually win re-election um, mm -hmm. over and over and over and over and over. And the way they do that is by giving people what they want by mm -hmm. like uh, nationalizing place, you know, and I'm not saying those policies are great, but like, you know, it's like if Trump were to move to the left economically, I think um, like, I, I mean, I, I think he'd be cruising to re-election. I, I don't know what's going right. to happen recently. I think if he had moved left economically, like he flirted with the idea from the beginning about universal health care. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't seem to be on the cards at all. Right. Um, and so it's like, so I think that Trump's like dictator impulses are not about policy or even power. It's just about ego. And, and so right. like, like and people joked about this like um, early on that like just put Trump in the West Wing, um, like the set of the West Wing, the TV show, mm -hmm. and make him think that he's the president. Mm. And then, but then have Hillary be the actual president. And like, I and just like trick him into, into doing that. <laughs> well, because I think that Trump, Trump, uh, Trump would have made a really good king, like right. in this, like in the sense of like Britain. Right, because in Britain the, the the monarchy has all the glory, but none of the power or responsibility, mm -hmm. and they're just this figurehead. I think Trump would have loved that. I think Trump would have loved to be the king and have Hillary be the prime minister. Right, right. That's a good point, actually. That so, like I'm not, I'm scared. Uh, you know, as far as Trump's policies and stuff, it just seems to be driven by like what will make people like him. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, the surrounding people, of course, prevent him from you know, going through with some of his crazy right. antics, um, but we'll see. Um, so about this, I mean, giving people money. So here's here's a schism in the libertarian. Mm -hmm. So you have libertarian ideologues, similar to liberal ideologues or conservative ideologues, where the government should not take from, like, everybody who worked the mm -hmm. taxpayers and distribute that wealth okay that's a good principle that's taxation is theft that that's 100 percent. i don't yeah i don't disagree. i don't think that's true but okay yeah i'll, I'll, I'll go along with you for that from from, from a moral perspective like mm -hmm. just the principle like if uh, okay so compare this to the zakat system or the alms in mm -hmm. in in uh, christianity the the christian person or the muslim person is self-declaring and willingly giving mm -hmm. it can be a treasury that's one of the ways fine mm -hmm. but it's self-declared and self-given now taxation system is what that the government puts its hand in your pocket count and take what it wants here's the difference so from alms point of view or zakat point of view if we don't do it then we deal with god's either pleasure or anger or whatever so that's an individual thing. 
versus taxation when the government forces its hands into your pocket to count and then take. So that's the moral, you know, if, difference. If it's your money. So if it's yes. so I, I think the, the 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 idea of taxation being theft begs the question. Um, so if uh, if government is legitimate and mm -hmm. if it has to spend money, mm -hmm. um, then and if the government has authority over you, then uh, like whatever system of taxation, like whenever it does that, whenever it like takes money from your account. And and then it's not theft. It's that's their money. It's not your money. No, I, I would. Disagree. So it depends on it depends on. So but it, it goes into uh, I, I think so. Th that's why I think that it begs the question of mm -hmm. um, of like whether it's your money or not. So if yeah. I agree, if it's not your money, that's a completely different ball game. But if it is yours, and here's how does the cat system work? You give the money, including to the treasury, and at many points or in history in Muslim ruled land under Khalifa so and so, there were especially Omar ibn Abdul Aziz, the, the the one of the famous early uh, caliphs. There was enough money, and he used to tour the country looking for poor person to give money to from mm -hmm. the treasury, and there were no poor. Why? because there were true Muslims who gave their true zakat, including to the treasury, to run the affairs of the country or the defense or whatever. Or and people who didn't government. give any money, they were just left alone? They were no. just allowed to so, be rich? So they were they assigned, they were assigned uh, stipends from the uh, treasury. No, I mean like people who, I don't mean people who didn't have any money, I mean people who didn't, like who refused to give money. Like if somebody refused to to give zakat, what would happen? Um, so that's on them. Like okay, so here's something in in Islam, you, you do not um, like you should not come out and say I am not going to give zakat. For example, like if okay, so what if somebody did that? What what if somebody came out and said I am not going to give zakat? Then that's under under a Muslim true Islamic rule in a just society, fair mm -hmm. and everything, then that would be uh, going basically against like what's completely solid known part of the faith, like a pillar okay. of the faith. Right. That, would be, because, that would be blasphemy. Uh, not only blasphemy, it could lead to other things, but of course yeah. it, it's so complicated that it, I, I guess my point is that, like, you know, you say that, like, zakat's voluntary or that, like, alms are voluntary or whatever. But, like, the, I mean, I, I don't know of any system where people who, who refuse to give, uh, who refuse to give zakat or alms um, or, you know, pay taxes were just left alone. Like, they were punished, right? At the time, it wasn't an issue, especially during that time of Omar ibn Abdul Aziz, because there was enough. Like mm -hmm. the, the people, and here's you, to your point of the government role uh, should like guide the society towards more just and mm -hmm. virtue. But that's an under, an, like the experience here under an Islamic ruling system applied correctly with justice and this and that. We will have an issue under the Constitution of the United States because, okay, so which system are you going to apply? Is it Catholic? Is it Muslim? Is it Protestant? Sure. Is it this and that. So I kind of like the American Constitution because it allows for the freedom to have the smaller groups. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, uh, the, the arbitration system, like we mentioned in Texas. Right happening in other places. Two Muslims want to go to a Muslim imam to resolve their issue, legal mm -hmm. issue, and then the judge approves it if the, if it doesn't contradict with the Constitution. Similar things with Catholic or Protestant or Jewish or this and that. Yeah, and un under, the, under the Ottoman Empire, people could, um, uh, I mean, in a similar way, you could, two Christians could take each other to like Sharia court. And right. for, for, for the most part, the... I mean, the courts kind of competed. It was, uh, it was like, it was again, polycentric law mm -hmm. where, and for the most part, the Islamic uh, courts were preferred. By the individual? By the non-Muslims. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah. Anyway, um, this is an awesome discussion. I want to yeah. have another hour about that. But let's, let's do it again soon. Yes, but in the last few minutes, tell me about your uh, kids and okay. uh, the story. Even better. Yeah. The story, what story? Uh, about the moon. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so uh, well, my kids are great. They're uh, Jewel and Johnny, and they're two, and uh, Johnny is almost one. Um, and uh, the um, they're they're awesome. They're bright. They're um, uh, they're just great. Um, and right now they are across the street. This is how Muslim I am. Is that across the, across the street? My parents uh, or my wife's parents live across the street from us. Wow. Okay. So they are they are over there right now. But the joke I think you want me to the story about how we suspect my daughter might be Muslim because uh, like. And not in the way that you guys say that every baby's Muslim, not the fitra thing. <laughs> uh, I mean, like there have been signs, and there's there's a few signs. Number one, she was late, right? She was uh, <laughs> it was two weeks past her due date, and we're like, this baby's a Muslim time, <laughs> like this. Um, also, she eats at really weird times of the day, um, and like, not white scheduling at all. She wants dinner at like midnight and stuff like that. But the main reason we think she might be Muslim is we've been reading to her every night one book. And I, I got the book right here. Uh, Good Night Moon. She loves this book. The problem is whenever we read it to her, she starts arguing about whether she saw the moon. And it's just this huge debate like every night where, she, you know, I'm like, it's right there. And she's like, it's cloudy. It doesn't count if it's cloudy. And I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> the schedule says the moon is right there. And she's like, we don't go by the schedule. We go where we can see it like our ancestors did. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Isna. Isna says the moon is right there. And she's like, I don't let them tell us what to do. And so it's this huge debate. And so we have to resolve it somehow. So what we figured out is that every night after we read to her, uh, she will walk across the floor, pick up her toy phone and call a Saudi baby and ask them if they saw the moon. And we just do whatever they say. So, so uh, yeah. Well, in my household, we don't go with the Saudi baby. <laughs> you don't go with the Saudi baby? You go by, just, by, by, by whether you see it? Uh, well, too many things. I, yeah. I actually wrote a study about that. We'll, we'll talk That's about funny. it later. Cool. Yeah, have, have me on in a month. We'll do this. It'd be, it'd be great. Definitely. would love to have you again soon because th there are so many other things that we didn't get into. Uh, the, the, the hour I love flew by. I love tangents. Yeah. Yes, yes. That's that's cool. beautiful. Um, so I have an idea of a movie. You know, Harold and Kumar, Kumar mm -hmm. go to White yeah, Castle. Right. Uh -huh. we'll, we'll change your name as, as some people call you, Jiminy McMillan. Yeah, Jiminy McMillan. And Jiminy McMillan goes to Cairo. That's right. And I'll take you there and we'll yeah, do a movie. Yeah, awesome and Jiminy go to Cairo. That'd be awesome. <laughs> Let's do it. All right, Jeremy, thank you so much for joining me at Vantage Points. Uh, looking forward to having you again soon. All Ladies right. and gentlemen, there are hashtags and there is a hashtag. This is the hashtag. Take care, America. All right. See you.